Good afternoon. We're going to be talking about American Sweetheart pattern. It's a depression glass pattern. My name is Kathy Bysak and with me today is Maureen Malinowski and, and I'm Kathy Haddad. I started collecting this pattern um, as a compliment to my china dishes that I got when I was married 40 years ago. We have our 40 year anniversary today. And this pattern is called Primrose. It's white china plate from Japan with a pink rose on the side and a silver rim. And when I first saw depression glass in an antique store, I thought it was the pink glass would look beautiful as a compliment to this pattern. The first piece I ever bought from an antique store was this covered vegetable dish from Mayfair. And I love the pink flowers and the fact that it's covered. And I was hooked ever since I got the first piece of depression glass. American Sweetheart is made by Macbeth Evans Glass Company. The Macbeth Evans Glass Company was founded in 1899. the merger between the companies of George A. Macbeth and Thomas Evans, based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Most of their significant glass works was done in Charleroi, Pennsylvania. During World War I, the company produced glass for the Army and Navy, particularly reflectors for searchlights. In their lifespan, they created almost every kind of glass for illuminating, industrial, and scientific purposes but today they're probably most well known for their depression glass tableware. The patterns that they're most known for are the American Sweetheart that you see here, but they also made dogwood and a pattern called petalware. The pink depression glass is my favorite, but there, it also came in other colors. Um, the Monet, or Monax, I've heard it said both ways, is the white pattern that has a translucency to it that when you hold it up to light, it looks like bluish at the edges. It's a very beautiful lacy pattern. They also made it in a ruby red and a very deep blue that they called Ritz blue. Later, in 1936, they created an ivory color called Cremax to compete with the ongoing pottery trade. Later years, Monax and Cremax were made with the colored edges and uh, colored pattern on them. At some point, they also made crystal and amethyst peg ice cream dishes that fit into metal ice cream holders. And I have not seen those in um, antique stores, to my knowledge, on my travels, but um, from my research. Some of my favorite things about this pattern, I'm going to ask um, Maureen to hold up the 12-inch dinner plate. It's the lacy appearance of the pattern. It's called a molded etch pattern. Sorry, did I say 12 inch? That's a 10 inch dinner plate. I can't remember what I called it, but it's a 10 inch dinner plate. And then Kathy's going to show us the uh, saddle plate, which is 8 inch. That's this one up here. Oh, I'm, not, I'm out of order. I'm like... <laughs> 8 inch saddle plate. And then we have the 6 inch bread and butter or dessert plate. So I love that these. The pattern looks like lace. There's no flowers or birds in this pattern. It's just swags and scrolls. There's a center pattern and then the scalloped edge has the pattern on it as well. And I think one of my favorite things is how lacy it looks, how delicate it looks, and how thin the glass is for being surprisingly durable. And they, even the um, Florence 
the Prussian glass book calls it scratch resistant pattern and that it maintains well over the years. These were meant to be an everyday dish and they were found in everyday products as giveaways, such as uh, uh, cream of wheat and, and 50 pound bags of flour that people would collect these patterns through their purchases of other grocery items. The next item is a two-handled cream soup bowl, a recent find for me at the Barn Antiques on 8 Mile Road in uh, North Air um, for surprisingly little money. So I got, found seven bowls and I was very happy because that's one piece I did not have. On this side we have the uh, cereal bowl. It's a uh, six inch cereal bowl, which that would not cut it in my house for cereal when I was growing up, but um, maybe that's healthier to have a six inch cereal bowl. And then we have the four and a half inch footed sherbet. And we have the cup and saucer. And if you wouldn't mind holding up a cup and saucer as well. And you can see that the color is a little bit different between these two. This is the more true baby pink and this one's just a little darker. But for the most part, these pieces are well matched. This piece looks a little thicker too than the other ones. But, um, you know, it's really, unless you had them next to each other, you wouldn't necessarily notice that. Another one of my favorite things about the pink um, is that they often go with other pink patterns from other manufacturers and they look just fine together. Also on the table we have the um, open two-handled sugar bowl and the creamer in the American Sweetheart pattern. Now they did not make candlesticks, cookie jars, tidbit tray, console bowl, sandwich plate, the 15 and a half inch sandwich plate in the American Sweetheart pattern. But there are other patterns that go well with it. They didn't make a butter dish either. So on the table here, I have a butter dish from uh, Buttons and Bows, a Jeanette pattern. I love this butter dish because of uh, the diamond look to it and the large dome. The candlesticks are from Fenton and they're called Versailles. They got cute little feet on them and the, the scroll pattern kind of matches the American Sweetheart pattern. So I love those. I don't know who makes the bud vase. Um, I was told it was Depression Era Glassware by the um, antique store that was selling it, but they might have just wanted to sell it. But I love it. It looks the pink is very similar to it, and um, it's a beautiful bun vase. The salt and pepper is made in American Sweetheart, but I don't have that. I've not seen it anywhere. But this salt and pepper coordinates well is from Miss America pattern. The cruet set on this side of the table is the oil and vinegar set is from um, Hazel Atlas, we believe. It's pictured in their uh, books as, couldn't be confirmed, but as likely Hazel Atlas. From their uh, kitchenware line. The stemware is called watermelon because of their green footed stem. The bowl is an optic bowl with a flower etch absolutely gorgeous pink, coordinates well with these dishes. I don't know the pattern name or who made it, but I might find out maybe today at a meeting. <laughs> I think that's everything on the table. 
Um, I do have some other serving pieces to the side here. Uh, we have a 12 inch round platter. They call it a salver. And you can really see the detail of the lacy pattern etch on this plate, especially on one the edges. Just love the scallop look to it. So fancy, very fancy. <laughs> and we have a 13 inch oval platter, same pattern, beautiful. And then, as we saw earlier, we have the Monax 12 inch platter, same pattern um, in the white. And then Macbeth Evans also made the dogwood platter pattern, which is another fine pattern with an all over etch, also called apple blossom. Dogwood is probably the most common name. And then I have a uh, oval vegetable bowl. It's 11 inch and it's a nice deep bowl, about three inch deep. And I think that's all the pieces we have today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you to my film crew, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>